Welcome back to the haunting hour, the home where shadows whisper and the unseen lurks in every corner. If this video sends a shiver down your spine, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more chilling tales, and ring the bell to never miss an eerie episode. I'm eager to hear from you, so after the video, comment below to tell me which story you like the most and what haunting tales you'd like to hear next. Now gather your courage because it's time to dive into the first story. Let's see if you can handle the haunting. For a couple of months I worked as a DoorDash driver to earn some extra cash over the weekends. I live in a small neighborhood in Georgia, so most deliveries were quick and straightforward. One evening, I got a big order from a popular chicken place and promptly picked it up. As I loaded the bags into my car, I checked the app to see where I was headed. It was a secluded house at the end of a long driveway. I tend to drive a little over the speed limit to make more deliveries and, hopefully, more tips. However, driving fast sometimes leads to trouble, and that night was no exception. As I zoomed down the main road, I saw the dreaded flash of police lights in my mirror. I pulled over, and the officer handed me a hefty ticket, wiping out most of my earnings for the night. After the police left, I drove to the address, a remote house surrounded by trees. There was no doorbell, so I knocked loudly on the door. The area was eerily quiet, the only light coming from the house itself. The door swung open to reveal a tall, thin man with a scruffy beard. He seemed jittery and spoke in a rushed, anxious manner, which made me uneasy. He smelled strongly of smoke as he invited me inside to collect a tip, insisting he couldn't tip through the app. Reluctantly, I stepped inside with the food. The house was cluttered and smelled musty. As soon as I entered, he quickly shut the door and asked me to follow him to the dining room to set down the food. Despite feeling uncomfortable, I followed him. He then excused himself to go upstairs, asking me to wait. As I stood there, I heard a sudden, loud crash above, like something heavy falling, followed by a shout for help. Worried, I called up the stairs, asking if he was okay. The man groaned in pain, urging me to come up and help. Hesitantly, I used my phone's flashlight to navigate the cluttered staircase. Halfway up, the noises stopped, and silence filled the house. A chill ran down my spine as I paused, sensing something was off. Then, a sharp knock at the front door made me jump. I rushed down and opened it to find the same police officer from earlier. He was holding my wallet, which I must have dropped outside. I quickly explained the situation, mentioning the strange noises and my concern. The officer asked me to stay back as he drew his weapon and cautiously made his way upstairs. From the top of the stairs, I heard a brief scuffle followed by a chilling discovery. The officer had found several bodies chained up in the man's bedroom. The situation escalated quickly, resulting in a struggle and then a gunshot. Painful cries echoed down as the officer subdued the man. Together, we managed to bring the injured man outside just as the officer called for an ambulance. I stayed to provide a statement to the police, shaking from the night's events. Leaving the scene, I couldn't believe that the officer who ticketed me might have just saved my life or prevented something worse from happening. I started a side gig as a DoorDash driver a few months ago, mainly to pick up some extra money during the weekends and after my day job. Riding my scooter helped me weave through traffic and complete my deliveries faster. One chilly evening, I was tasked with delivering sushi to a customer named Mike. The journey from the restaurant to his place was about 20 minutes. Upon reaching the destination, a sprawling apartment complex greeted me. I checked the apartment number Mike had provided and rang the buzzer. A young woman responded through the intercom, her voice laced with confusion. She insisted that no one named Mike lived there. I apologized, stepped back, and rechecked the DoorDash app to confirm the address. Everything seemed correct. Apartment 15 was definitely the place listed. Puzzled, I decided to reach out to Mike via the app. The phone only rang once before it was sent to voicemail. Opting for a text instead, I was quickly relieved when Mike promptly replied. 
He apologized for any confusion and clarified that he wasn't at his apartment, but was actually at a nearby community center across the street, attending a late night event. He requested that I bring the sushi there instead and promised a generous tip for the inconvenience. This wasn't the first time I had to deliver to a non-residential location, so I wasn't too surprised. I easily found the community center, a well-lit building still bustling with some activity. I parked my scooter and approached the entrance, which was unexpectedly quiet for an event. I entered through the unlocked front doors and found the interior almost deserted, lit only by faint lights along a hallway leading to a gymnasium. It felt eerie and a sense of unease crept over me. Despite this, I called out for Mike, hoping to quickly hand over the sushi and leave, but there was no answer. Drawn by some light under a door, I ventured further into the building and peered into the gym where a lone basketball lay in the middle of the floor. I stepped inside to place the sushi on a nearby bench, but as I did, the gym door slammed shut with a loud thud. I spun around and saw a shadowy figure standing by the door. Alarmed, I yelled out, inquiring who was there. The figure only pointed at the sushi and asked if it was for Mike. I affirmed it, and the person stepped closer, their intentions unclear. Realizing I needed to act quickly, I mentioned that I was about to call the police on my phone. This startled the figure, who immediately ran out through a side exit. I wasted no time bolting from the community center and didn't stop until I was safely home. I later reported the incident to DoorDash and debated whether to involve the police, but ultimately chose not to. The experience was unnerving but important, as it taught me to always listen to my instincts and maintain caution during late night deliveries. It was just another Friday night and I was home alone. My parents were out of town for the weekend, and I had the house all to myself. Engrossed in a marathon gaming session, I barely noticed the hours slipping by until a growl from my stomach reminded me I hadn't eaten anything substantial since lunch. Checking the time, I realized it was already past 10 p.m. Too late to cook, but just the right time for a pizza. I pulled out my phone and scrolled through DoorDash until I found a local pizzeria still delivering. I placed an order for a large pepperoni pizza, and the app cheerfully told me to expect my delivery within 30 minutes. Satisfied, I tossed my phone aside and dove back into my game, confident that my dinner plans were well in hand. An hour ticked by and there was still no sign of my pizza. My initial annoyance turned into hunger-fueled irritation. I picked up my phone again to check the app. It showed that my order was still on its way. Weird. I decided to give the driver a call, but all I got was a straight run to voicemail. That's when I started to feel a bit uneasy. Just then, a text popped up from an unknown number. Hey, it's your DoorDash driver. I'm almost there. Come outside. The message was odd, and it made me pause. Why would the driver text me from a different number? I peered out the living room window, but saw no one. Feeling a bit creeped out, I texted back, asking where exactly he was. The reply sent a chill down my spine. I see you. I didn't know what to make of it. The street was dark and empty. No delivery car, no friendly driver with a pizza in hand just shadows and the occasional rustle of leaves in the breeze. I decided not to take any chances. I locked every door and turned off most of the lights, hoping to make it harder for anyone to see inside. I stayed upstairs, away from any windows, my heart pounding in my chest. Minutes felt like hours as I waited, watching from the second story window. Eventually a figure emerged from the darkness, walking slowly up my driveway. He didn't look like any delivery driver I'd ever seen. No uniform, no insulated food bag, just a bulky coat and a hood pulled low over his face. That was all I needed to see. I grabbed my phone and dialed 911, whispering my address and explaining the situation to the dispatcher. The figure lingered by my front door, seemingly hesitant. When he noticed me on the phone through the window, he turned and walked briskly away disappearing into the night. The police arrived within minutes, flooding my front yard with light and safety. 
They took my statement and scoured the area, eventually finding a smartphone in the bushes next to my driveway. It turned out to be the real driver's phone, reported stolen just hours earlier. The officers told me I had done the right thing by calling them and not confronting the stranger. They suspected the man had been using the stolen phone to find addresses for potential burglaries, posing as a delivery driver. After the police left, I was alone again, but the relief of safety quickly gave way to a lingering fear. I spent the rest of the night replaying the incident in my mind, thankful that my instinct to be cautious had kicked in at the right time. Days later, the police informed me that they had caught the man, along with a few accomplices, in the middle of another attempted theft. It was a small comfort, but it drove home an important lesson. Always stay alert, even in the seemingly safe routine of ordering food online. I made sure to share my story with all my friends, hoping it would remind them to be just as vigilant. I had been a delivery driver for DoorDash for a few months. It was a way to make some extra cash while studying full-time at the local community college. Crafting my own schedule was the biggest perk, especially with classes scattered throughout the day. However, delivering late at night often left me with a sinking feeling, especially after hearing some gruesome tales about delivery drivers facing dangers during their shifts. The night in question started off like any other. I wrapped up my last class around 4 p.m., went for a quick jog, and by 7 p.m., I was logged into the DoorDash app, ready to make some deliveries. That night, the orders came in back to back, mostly from the usual fast food joints that dotted the main street. Around midnight, after delivering some tacos to a night shift worker, I received a peculiar order. The customer, who called himself Greg, left a note on the app explaining that the GPS might not locate his house correctly because it was recently built and might not appear on some maps. He mentioned that he would wait outside to make it easier. Though slightly unusual, I didn't think much of it. Some areas around our small town were developing quickly, and it wasn't rare for the new streets to be missing from my GPS. Greg had ordered a large pepperoni pizza and a couple of sodas, nothing out of the ordinary. But as I approached the destination, the unease began to creep in. The road to Greg's place was barely lit, surrounded by thick woods and fields that stretched into darkness. The further I drove, the fewer houses I saw, and the weaker my phone signal became. Just as I was considering turning back, believing I might have taken a wrong turn, a new message from Greg popped up. Hey, I see you drove past me. Just turn around. I'm right here. I stopped the car and squinted through the darkness, trying to spot Greg. Reluctantly, I turned the car around. As I drove slowly, looking out for him, I couldn't shake off the feeling that something was off. The area didn't look like it was under development at all. It was just empty and neglected. Finally, I saw a figure waving from the side of the road. He was a tall, broad-shouldered man, standing under the sparse light of a lone street lamp. I pulled up beside him, window rolled down just enough to speak comfortably. DoorDash for Greg? I asked, trying to sound cheerful despite my growing anxiety. Yeah, that's me. Thanks for coming out this far, he replied, his voice muffled by a scarf wrapped around his face, which I found odd given the mild night. As I handed him the bag, I noticed his other hand tucked behind his back. Something about his posture set off alarm bells in my head. I was about to roll up the window when he suddenly moved his hidden hand forward, revealing a heavy-looking chain. Panic surged through me as he lunged forward, trying to loop the chain over the mirror to pull himself closer. Instinctively, I hit the gas, the sudden movement throwing him off balance. He stumbled backward as I sped away, my heart pounding furiously. I didn't stop until I was several miles away, in a well-lit area near the town center. Shaking, I called the police and reported the incident. They took my statement and promised to investigate, but as far as I knew, Greg, or whoever he was, vanished without a trace. After that night, I made a decision to stop taking orders past 10 p.m. No amount of extra cash was worth the risk of encountering someone like Greg again. The experience left me shaken but grateful that I trusted my instincts at the crucial moment.
It was a chilly November evening, and I was hustling to make some extra cash with DoorDash. The night was slower than usual, and as a college student with rent due soon, I couldn't afford to be picky about the orders. That's why, despite my better judgment, I accepted a delivery in a part of town known for being rough around the edges. Most times, people there didn't tip well, which could be pretty discouraging since every dollar counted for me. I usually keep a can of pepper spray for safety because it makes me feel a bit more secure, especially in sketchy situations. Unfortunately, I'd left it at my apartment that night. Realizing I didn't have it as I parked near the drop-off location, I felt my anxiety spike. Finding the right address was a nightmare. The streets were poorly lit, and the house numbers were nearly impossible to see in the dark. After circling the block a couple of times, I decided to message the customer for help. The response I got wasn't friendly. The customer, who seemed really irritated, wasn't making much sense, and even started throwing insults my way. Enough was enough. I wasn't going to let someone treat me that way, safety or not. I called DoorDash support to cancel the order, explaining that I felt unsafe. They were understanding about the situation, but it took almost 10 minutes to sort everything out while I was on hold. As I waited in my parked car, I noticed another vehicle about half a block back that suddenly turned on its headlights. It was so bright in my rearview mirror that it practically blinded me. At first, I brushed it off as a coincidence. But when I started driving away, that car began to follow me. Every turn I made, it was right there behind me. My heart raced. I was being followed. I remembered what my older brother once told me about situations like this. Stay calm and head somewhere public. I dialed 911 and explained what was happening as I drove to the nearest busy place I could think of, a 24-hour grocery store. By the time I pulled into the brightly lit parking lot, the other car was still on my tail. I parked, and to my dismay, the driver pulled up right next to me. He got out and came over, demanding his food in a loud, aggressive voice. I cracked my window open just a little and told him I'd give him the food if he backed off and gave me some space. This only made him angrier. Just then, police sirens filled the air, and two officers pulled up. They quickly intervened, calming the situation and detaining the man. I explained everything to the officers, showing them the rude messages the man had sent. He looked like he could be in his late thirties, way bigger and stronger than me. I'm just an average-sized guy, and only 19. The situation escalated quickly from there. The man started yelling at the cops, making threats. Despite being handcuffed, he resisted fiercely as they tried to get him into the police car. It turned out he was carrying illegal substances, which led to more charges on top of harassment. Later, I found out from the police that he had a history of criminal behavior and was actually on parole. He had been in and out of jail for years. His actions that night meant he was likely going back to prison for a long time. Reflecting on everything as I drove home, I realized how lucky I was. The situation could have turned out much worse. I was thankful for the police's quick response and the measures I had taken by going to a public place. It was a stark reminder of the risks that come with the job, but also a moment where I felt that justice had definitely been served. I had recently started driving for DoorDash, mainly on weekend nights when the tips were decent and the streets quieter. Juggling college during the day and deliveries at night wasn't easy, but I needed the extra cash. Usually I'd run only the DoorDash app because handling more seemed too hectic for me. One Saturday night, things were unusually slow. Hours were dragging by and my phone was quiet. Just as I considered calling it a night, a notification popped up. It was a $12 order from a pizza place, only about 10 miles from where I was. That was a good deal for my area, so I accepted without a second thought. It was close to midnight by the time I arrived at the delivery address. The area was sketchier than I expected, with dim streetlights and an eerie silence hanging in the air. I pulled into the driveway and left my headlights on to light my path to the front door. The instructions on the app specified a hand-to-hand -hand delivery, 
So I grabbed the pizza and headed to the door. After a couple of light knocks, there was no answer. I knocked again, this time a bit louder, trying to make sure they heard me. Just as my hand fell from the last knock, my phone buzzed with a message from the customer. They asked if I could come around to the back door instead. A wave of unease washed over me. The request felt off, especially this late at night. Ignoring the sinking feeling in my stomach, I typed a quick, okay, and started walking toward the back of the house. The backyard was shrouded in darkness, far darker than the front. My heart began to pound as the shadows seemed to swallow me whole. Halfway to the back door, my instincts screamed at me to turn back. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was very wrong. Without allowing myself to think twice, I spun on my heels and hurried back toward the safety of my car. As I neared the driveway, a man's voice called out from the darkness. Hey, wait! I'm down here! Come back! His tone was friendly, but I wasn't taking any chances. I didn't even glance back as I unlocked my car and jumped inside. My hands shook as I started the engine. Glancing in the rearview mirror, my breath caught in my throat. Three men emerged from the bushes, all wearing masks and moving quickly toward my car. Adrenaline surged through me and I slammed the gas pedal, tires screeching as I sped away from the house. Once I had put some distance between myself and that house, I pulled over and called the police. My voice trembled as I explained what had happened. The dispatcher assured me that officers were on their way to check out the scene. I didn't stop shaking until I was safely back in my apartment, doors locked and lights on. The next few days were agonizing as I waited for any news from the police. When they finally called, they confirmed my worst fears. The house was long abandoned, used occasionally by vagrants or for illicit activities. Feeling frustrated and still scared, I reached out to DoorDash support, hoping they could trace the customer through the payment method used. Unfortunately, they weren't much help. Due to privacy policies, they couldn't give me any information about the customer without a police subpoena, which seemed unlikely given the circumstances. The incident left me rattled, but wiser. I realized just how vulnerable I was out there, delivering alone at night. From that night on, I made sure to strictly follow safety protocols. No more deliveries to dark, isolated places, and always trust my gut if something feels off. I shared my story with other drivers in an online community. Many had similar experiences or close calls and we all agreed that our safety was the top priority. We swapped tips and strategies for keeping safe on the job, and I learned the value of community and shared knowledge in navigating the risks of gig work. That night taught me a tough lesson, but I was grateful to have escaped unharmed. I became more cautious and alert, always aware of my surroundings, and never compromising on my safety for the sake of a delivery. It's a wild world out there, and sometimes, all you have to rely on is your instinct and the lessons you've learned along the way. Last year, I moved out of my dad's house for the first time. It was a big step for me. I was 19, and my girlfriend Emily moved in with me not long after. We found a cozy little apartment in a quiet part of town. It wasn't much, but it was ours. We both loved the peace, especially since we were kind of introverts. We didn't go out much, preferring the comfort of our own space. This meant lots of DoorDash, because cooking wasn't exactly our strong suit. We had our favorite spots. Being in a small town, there weren't many to choose from, but that was okay. One of them was a local pizza place called Tony's, which became our go-to on late nights. That place knew us by our first names, and we had a regular dasher, Mike, who almost always brought our orders. We trusted him, which made what happened one night even more bizarre. It was a Friday night and we decided to stay in and watch movies. Emily loved horror films and I had gotten into the habit of playing them, pretending I wasn't scared just to keep her company. Halfway through some ghost story, she drifted off, leaving me alone with the eerie sounds of the TV. Feeling a bit peckish, I decided to order from Tony's. I went all out, extra toppings, some garlic knots, even threw in a dessert. 
It had been a long week, and I figured, why not? In the delivery instructions, I put the code to our building's door. It was something I'd done dozens of times before. The app told me Mike had picked up the order, and I watched his icon approach on the map. But then something odd happened. His car icon stopped right outside, but didn't move. Minutes ticked by. Fifteen minutes passed, and I started to wonder what was going on. Then my phone buzzed. A message from Mike, which was weird because we usually didn't communicate unless something was wrong. He said, Hey, got a little snag. Some guy tried to grab your food. Had to sort it out. Be right up. Okay, weird. But it was late, and maybe someone was just messing around, I thought. Then my apartment buzzer rang. I peeked through the peephole, but didn't see Mike. Instead, there was some guy I didn't recognize, standing there looking jittery. Hello, who is it? I asked through the door. It's DoorDash, got your order, the guy replied. But his voice was off, anxious. Something didn't feel right. Uh, you sure? Where's Mike? The guy shuffled his feet, then said, Mike had to run. Car trouble. I'm filling in. I was skeptical. The building code was something we gave to very few people. How did this guy get it if he was just filling in? And where was Mike's familiar green car? All I saw was a beat-up sedan I didn't recognize. Then things got scarier. The guy started fumbling at the door, trying the handle. Hey, can you just open up? It's cold out here. My heart raced. Emily was still asleep, and I didn't want to wake her or scare her, but I also didn't want to open the door. I texted Mike quickly, asking if everything was okay, but there was no reply. I decided to stall. Just leave the food by the door. I'll get it later. The man paused, then laughed, a weird, nervous laugh. Nah, man, I'll wait. This area looks sketchy. Sketchy. We lived in one of the quietest parts of town. Red flags went up all over the place. I texted Mike again, urging him to reply. Meanwhile, the guy outside started knocking harder. Come on, man, open up. Then suddenly, from the corner of my eye, I saw a shadow move rapidly towards the front of the building. It was Mike. He looked disheveled, his uniform torn. He rushed up to the door, pushing the stranger away, who then turned on him, fists flying. Panic set in. I didn't know what to do. Opening the door seemed risky, but Mike was out there fighting. Without thinking, I opened the door, grabbed Mike, and pulled him inside, slamming the door shut behind us. The stranger banged on the door a few more times before it went quiet. Mike was panting, his face bruised. Thanks, man. That guy, he... He jumped me when I was getting out of the car. Took my phone, tried to take the food too. My mind was racing. Emily woke up from the commotion and I quickly explained what happened. She called the cops while I helped Mike sit down. He was shaking, clearly in shock. The police arrived within minutes. They found the fake Dasher hiding nearby, still with Mike's phone and our pizza, now cold and ruined. It turned out he was wanted for several thefts in the area. That night was a wake-up call for us. We realized how quickly things could go wrong, how important it was to stay alert, even in our quiet town. Mike was okay, thankfully, but it took him a while to get back on his feet. DoorDash gave us a refund and a bunch of coupons, but more than anything, I was just glad we were safe. We still order from Tony's, but we pick up our orders now, and I always make sure to keep the door locked, no matter how safe our neighborhood seems. Moving to a new city was supposed to be a fresh start for me. I was 20, recently moved out on my own, and was trying to balance college with a part-time job. To make ends meet, I also started delivering for DoorDash in the evenings. My apartment was in a quieter part of town, which I liked because it felt safer, especially since I often got home late. One evening, my friend Clara, who lived a few blocks away, texted me saying she had a surprise and had ordered my favorite Thai food through DoorDash as a treat. We usually opted for contactless delivery due to our schedules. That night, however, something off happened that left me uneasy for days. The app notified me that my order was delivered, 
Clara had used the leave it door option, so I expected to find my food outside when I went to grab it. However, as I approached the door, something felt wrong. Instead of walking straight out, I peeked through the peephole. To my surprise, I saw the dasher just standing there, staring at my door. He wasn't on his phone or looking around. He was just staring, motionless. Confused, I texted Clara to double check if she'd indeed put the leave at door instruction, and she confirmed she had. Wondering if there was some confusion, I decided to wait a few minutes, hoping the guy would just leave the food and go. But he didn't move. He just stood there. Growing more anxious, I whispered to myself, what is he waiting for? After a few more minutes, Clara said she would call the dasher to remind him to leave the food. I watched as his phone lit up. He looked at it, then silenced it without answering. He did this repeatedly, ignoring all attempts Clara made to communicate. My heart raced as I tried to understand his behavior. If he wanted to steal the food, he could have just left with it. Why stand there? Almost driven by a sudden impulse, I thought about stepping outside to confront him, but my intuition screamed at me to stay put. Just then, he moved out of my line of sight. I darted to the living room window, peering out to see where he went. He was now crouched behind the bushes near my door. Fear gripped me. I wasn't just scared. I was terrified. Who hides behind bushes if they're just delivering food? I watched as he eventually stood up and walked back to his car parked across the street, food still in hand. He sat in the car, his gaze fixed towards my apartment. I felt trapped in my own home, watching as he waited, doing nothing but staring in the direction of my door. This standoff lasted for what felt like an eternity, but was probably only another 10 to 15 minutes. Then, abruptly, he started his car and drove off in a huff as if angry that I hadn't come outside. Relieved yet shaken, I called Clara back, telling her what happened. She was as freaked out as I was and suggested I report the incident to DoorDash, which I did immediately. The customer service was sympathetic, but could only offer a refund and an apology. They promised to look into the Dasher's behavior. A few restless nights passed. I kept thinking about the Dasher, trying to make sense of his actions. Then, I saw a local news report that chilled me to the bone. A DoorDash driver was arrested for attempting to kidnap a young girl who had come out to collect her food. It was the same guy. The story hit too close to home. What if I had stepped outside that night? This incident taught me a crucial life lesson. Always trust your instincts. If something doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. I learned to take extra precautions, like installing a better security system and being more vigilant about my surroundings, especially at night. I still use DoorDash, but now I always make sure to pick up my orders from well-lit public places. No more home deliveries when I'm alone. I shared my story with friends and family, and it sparked discussions about personal safety and the importance of being alert. None of us wants to live in fear but being cautious and prepared helps me feel safer as I navigate life in this new city. One chilly winter night about a year ago, I was working the graveyard shift at the old bookstore downtown, the one sandwiched between a row of similar brick buildings. It was past midnight and the streets were deserted except for the occasional car passing by. It was my coworker Jenna's birthday, and since we were both stuck working late, I decided to order some pizza through DoorDash. I remembered having a pretty decent driver from the same service last week, so I was hoping he'd be the one to deliver again, especially since our bookstore could be a maze to find for new drivers. I kept an eye on the driver's map on my phone, stepping out into the crisp night air as soon as I saw his dot nearing. Our parking lot was well lit with several floodlights, and I stood directly under one, wearing my bright red hoodie. I figured that there was no way he could miss me. The phone rang just as I was expecting him to pull up. It was the driver. But instead of coming to me, he asked me to meet him by a side alley of the building. Puzzled, I scanned the area and saw no sign of him until I wandered a few yards away towards the alley. There he was, 
parked in shadows near the dumpsters. His car lights off. Hey, what's up? Why are you sitting in the dark? Our pizzas are getting cold, I called out, a bit annoyed but trying to keep it friendly. He didn't respond and stayed on the phone, speaking rapidly in another language. After a moment, he hung up and just sat there. I waited, tapping my foot impatiently. Finally, he turned on his car lights and slowly drove over to where I was standing. As he rolled down the window, he was still talking into his phone. It translated his words into English. Hello, I am learning English. I need friends. Will you be my friend? He then awkwardly extended the phone towards me. Oh, cool app, I replied, trying to keep the interaction brief. I glanced at him, waiting for him to hand over the pizza boxes. There was an awkward pause. He kept speaking into his phone, repeating phrases about needing friends. I finally said, Look, I really need to get back. It's my friend's birthday. I reached out to grab the pizza, but as I did, he touched my hand and held it a little too long. Can I have your number? He asked suddenly, his English surprisingly clear. The situation felt increasingly uncomfortable. His earlier attempts to meet in the dark, his strange behavior, and now this direct request made me anxious. I just need the pizza, please, I insisted, pulling my hand back. He hesitated, then said, why don't you join me for a drive? Just then, I noticed someone from the tattoo parlor next door stepping out into the parking lot, heading towards their car. The presence of another person seemed to startle the driver. He quickly handed me the pizza boxes and drove off at a speed that didn't seem normal. Back inside, Jenna and I discussed the weird encounter. I decided to report the driver to DoorDash and even mention the incident on social media. It turned out that he had behaved similarly with another customer who lived not too far from us. This other customer had also been asked personal questions and felt uncomfortable during the interaction. DoorDash responded to my complaint promptly. They assured me that they had deactivated the driver's account due to his inappropriate behavior. I was relieved, but still shaken by the whole experience. It was a stark reminder of how careful you have to be, even in situations that seem ordinary. The event left me wary of ordering late at night, but I was grateful for the quick response from both DoorDash and the community online. It's important to keep an eye out, not just for ourselves, but also for each other. It was a cool evening in October, the kind of night that hinted at the coming winter with a slight chill in the air. I had just turned 18 and was working as a DoorDash driver, a job that fit perfectly with my school schedule and allowed me some cash to save up for college. The town of Millerwood was small, a place where everyone knew each other, or at least recognized faces. That made my job easier and, typically, safer. I remember that night vividly. It was supposed to be just another shift. Deliver some dinners, earn some tips, and go home. I had been doing it for a few months, darting through the town streets in my old Honda, which had seen better days. My phone beeped with a new order from Tony's Pizzeria, a popular spot on the west side of town. As I drove to Tony's, I enjoyed the quiet streets, the way the leaves rustled in the gentle wind, and the occasional cat darting out in front of my headlights. The pickup was quick. The restaurant staff knew me by now, and would usually have the order ready as I walked in. With the pizza warming the passenger seat next to me, I set off toward the address provided in the app. The delivery address was on the outskirts of Millerwood, a part of town I hadn't visited much. The houses here were spaced further apart, and street lamps were fewer and far between. As I navigated the dark, winding roads, I felt a slight unease. It wasn't fear. After all, this was still Millerwood, but an awareness that I was out of my element. I found the house tucked away at the end of a long driveway, shadowed and partly hidden by tall, looming trees. I walked up to the front door, the gravel crunching under my sneakers, and rang the bell. While I waited, I glanced around, noting how isolated the house seemed. Finally, the door opened, and an elderly man greeted me with a smile. He thanked me, gave me a generous tip, 
and I headed back to my car, feeling relieved but eager to leave. As I drove away, I noticed a figure standing near the trees at the edge of the property. They were too far to see clearly, but something about the way they stood there, still, just watching, sent a chill down my spine. I told myself it was probably a neighbor or maybe another curious local, but the unease stayed with me. The rest of the night was uneventful, and I tried to shake off the creepy feeling. A few nights later, however, my app pinged with another delivery, this time for a late order from the same address. Reluctantly, I accepted, telling myself that it was just another delivery. As I approached the same house, the memory of that figure watching from the trees lingered in my mind. I parked, took a deep breath, and walked up to the door. Again, the elderly man answered just as friendly as before. But this time, as I turned to leave, I saw the figure again, closer this time, near the garage. It was definitely a man, roughly dressed, and as our eyes met, he quickly turned and walked briskly towards the back of the house. Shaken, I hurried back to my car. As I buckled up, I saw him again, now standing by the trees, watching as I drove away. That was enough for me. When I got home, I told my parents about the man, and they agreed that I should report it to the police and avoid taking orders to that address again. The next day, I went to the police station and described everything. The officer noted it down and promised to check the area. I didn't hear back immediately, but it gave me some peace of mind knowing that they were aware. I continued working for DoorDash, but I never delivered to that house again. Eventually, I learned from a fellow driver that the house was known for its reclusive owner and that nobody in the area really knew who might be wandering around it at night. The experience stayed with me, a reminder of the unpredictability of life and the importance of listening to your instincts. It also taught me more about my town and the mysteries that could hide in its quieter corners. As I saved enough money and eventually stopped working for DoorDash to focus on college, I always remembered those nights. They taught me about caution, about the unexpected, and about the protective embrace of a small town. Sometimes, I still drive past that house, wondering about the man in the trees, but thankful that my nights of deliveries are behind me. Thank you for joining me tonight on The Haunting Hour. If these stories sent shivers down your spine, don't forget to hit that like button. It helps me bring more chilling tales straight to your screen. If you're not yet part of our ghostly gathering, click subscribe and ring the bell to not miss out on any of our haunted adventures. And I'm curious, which story tonight creeped you out the most? Drop a comment below to let us know. Your favorite stories fuel our dark fires and inspire more spooky tales. Also, what kind of scary stories do you want to hear next? Tell me in the comments. Your wish might just become our next nightmare. Until next time, keep the lights on and keep the spirits at bay. Good night, and remember, never venture alone into the dark.